Hey everyone, this is John Buck. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the first sort of non-ideal thing we'll bring into our analysis of array processors or beamformers, which is uh, how does it affect our beamformer when the array elements are not quite in the locations where we think they are, where there's a small error perturbation in location. Uh, and we'll develop a model for that and see what the effect is on the beam pattern uh, and, and how that affects, in fact, the notches much more than it affects the main lobe or the main whip, uh, the main beam of, of the beamformer. Uh, there's very similar analysis that can go on uh, for the case where the sensors are in the correct location, but the sensor electronics have not been perfectly calibrated. And so you may have gain errors or phase errors on the amplifiers or other parts of the, the, the uh, sensors themselves. Uh, but hopefully if you understand the analysis we'll do today, it's sort of the same big picture concept. And then you can follow the, the description in the book uh, to work out the uh, array element calibration errors story and see how it has a similar effect. Okay, so let's switch over to the whiteboard. And we're going to begin with this nice figure uh, that David Campos Anchieta, who took this class two years ago, made for a recent talk he gave at the Acoustical Society uh, conference, uh, illustrating the, the issue we're concerned about. So in this thing, we're saying, imagine we have a uniform line array, or we believe we have a uniform line array, where the sensors are equally spaced, shown by these orange circles. But in the process of either assembling or using the array or over time, the sensors have been perturbed away from their nominal position. So this is where we think they are. The yellow circles are where they actually are. We would expect, given, given that, as we've learned, so much of what beamforming is about is about doing, uh, anticipating and undoing time delays, that if you move the sensors a little bit, you're going to change the time delay. And when I change the time delay a little bit for a narrowband waveform, that's changing the phase a little bit, the phase angle associated with that complex number. And so when we add things up, when we try to steer the beam in a certain direction, the things we think are being constructively reinforced won't be quite so perfectly constructively reinforced. And the thing, more importantly, we'll see the things we think have destructive interference will be uh, less, there'll be much less destructive interference than we thought there was. So let, that's sort of the, the, the picture we have here, just to give you an idea of what the sensors are like. Now let's, let's switch and look at, the, um, at developing a model for this. So again, the idea behind spatial filtering is we're trying to set up conditions where we have constructive interference uh, for the things we, the, direct, the waves coming from the direction where we want to keep and in the passband of our spatial filter. And we have destructive interference for the waves coming from other directions, or at least as close to destructive as possible. And so before we get into all the mathematics, again, a, a common strategy that, that, that we'll try to follow in this class that's, that's helpful is to think of the high level conceptual picture first of what's going on. So with constructive interference, we like saying, I assume I have these two vectors that have lined up that when I add them end to end like this, they're, they're both actually on top of each other. So when I do vector, graphical vector addition, I add them on top. The resultant vector is just one, oh, one long vector here that looks like this. Right? And it would be, uh, in this case, just to put a scale and say that if this would be length one, if each of these were a half, in the simplest case where I have two sensors, our real arrays are going to be much bigger, but let's just get our head about what's going on simply here. And meanwhile, with destructive interference down here, right, the two would cancel each other out. I'd have, after I'd applied the, the phase representing the time shifts for the two sensor array, the things that were being canceled would, would actually be the, the complex vectors. Oh, I should have described clearly. This is like looking in the complex plane. So imagine I'm sort of looking here. Imagine this is the real and imaginary axis. And same thing here. We're saying in this complex plane, if I have these two complex numbers that are opposite, when I add them, they cancel out and I get zero. So now, as I perturb those things, as I showed a second ago here, Right, as I mess the sensor locations around a little bit, that's going to change the phase of the plane waves as observed. Right, If I'm thinking about a beam pattern or a scan response or something, it's going to say the phase delays are going to be a little different from what I thought they were, depending on the direction. Uh, and so I'd have a problem if I sort of say, well, instead of having x1 plus x2 like this, if I have a little mistake in phase when I add these two, right, they won't be quite lined up. I'll end up with this. And my new resultant vector will be something that looks like this, right? This sort of, or maybe I should do it in a, in a different color here. I'll do uh, the new result is yellow, would actually be the vector from here to here. It's gonna not, if this was, if this green thing was one long, this one might be a little shorter by the time I add it carefully. I'll be making this triangle. And meanwhile, with the destructive version down here, 
if instead of having them canceling each other out perfectly, the new x2 looks like this, so that when I add them, instead of canceling perfectly at zero, if I, if I pick this up and uh, shift it over for the vector addition, right, we'll see they don't quite cancel, but I get this small resultant down here. So the thing that should have been zero is now going to, the sum is going to be th th this magnitude down here. And instead of being zero, it will be a bit bigger. Uh, so that that will be, on one hand, that doesn't seem like that big a difference, but we'll see it is kind of asymmetrical this way, just to put some numbers on it. But this angle here is about 5.7 degrees, so they're out of alignment by less than 6 degrees, which is also about 0.03 pi radians, right? This vector here will be, a the result in length will be about 0.1. If each of these were a half and they were going to sort of be, you know, the constructive thing adds to have a gain of 1 and the destructive version should have been 0, this will be about 0.1 which means when I think about the power, we're saying what was a perfect notch that was going to cancel anything out uh, is now going to be only 20 dB down. So on one hand, that seems like a lot, but for a very loud interferer that I needed a lot of cancellation, that's only a little better than, the, than maybe the third side lobe of, of the, of the uh, uniform waiting. So, so it takes you know, what was a perfect notch without the phase error, so the perfect notch where the beam pattern, say at the angle of the notch, was zero, is now going to be 0.1, which means it's only uh, 20 dB down instead of an infinite number of dB of perfectly canceling anything. But on the constructive side, if I have that same 5.7 degree error, or same uh, 0.03 pi radians, this new vector, instead again, the constructive interference was supposed to be one, this will still be something like 0 0.99. So I've only gained, it, lost a little bit of that. When I translate into dB, this will be, if I take 20 log of the, of the result, it'll be about uh, point, minus 0 0.01 dB instead of the ideal version, right? My nominal version, the beam pattern in the look direction was supposed to be one, which would be zero dB. So in a dB sense, I've only lost a hundredth of a dB in the constructive interference, but I've had a big change in the destructive interference. What was a perfect notch that could have canceled anything is now only going to attenuate them by 20 dB. And maybe that's still enough, but that might be a problem. And so one of the takeaway messages conceptually from this is that these kind of non-ideal features, these imperfections or perturbations, uh, are much more dangerous to destructive interference when we're relying it on constructive. Or maybe said another way, that destructive interference is much more fragile, numerically speaking, than constructive interference. Okay, so I'm going to, that's the sort of conceptual big picture. I'm going to stop this video here, and then the next one will go on to starting to develop a model with more precise equations that supports these big picture intuitions we started from.